So we'll, uh, I guess we'll get out bit by bit, shall we? Like a Pandora's box? Yes, exactly so. Um, Christmas stocking. Sweet Sicily. Oh, look at that beauty. I think these are amazing. So, is Sweet Sicily related to fennel in any way? It sure problem? is. In it fact, is. all of those anise flavourings, except, uh, actually, you know, I don't actually know what, Anything about the plant that star anise comes from? Well, I know it is in the same family, but I, I actually doubt it. But aniseed itself, fennel, sweet sicily, they're all in the carrot family. Yeah. Yeah, we've got those, the, these fronds are very carrot-like, aren't they? That's right, yeah. And, and, and you'll, you'll have seen probably the, the umbrella-shaped flowers. Oh. And then, and then the umbrella of seeds. Well, that's the typical Well, the sweet family. sesame seeds. Mm. Do you sell those as well? We do, we do. Oh, God, I must, I must get them, because I think they're just the most delicious thing. One of my favourite treats is walking through a garden, or um, vegetable garden, and the fennel flowers come up, and then if there's anything that's bolted, just having these wonderful buds and seeds. Mm. It's absolutely delicious, and it's instantly your mouth is refreshed and delighted and sparked. It's a very, very wonderful thing. I adore sweet Sicily madly. I think it's a very... Is tarragon related to this as well? No. So there's, no. there's the slight so, anise thing that's not in there. Tarragon yeah. is... Chervil as well, possibly? Chervil. Yep. Chervil, yes. Tarragon, no. Tarragon's Interesting. related to chamomile and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, wormwood and all of those things. Yeah. In fact, there's a very close relative of tarragon that we'll get to in a minute. But what, what, what have you done with... with um, Yes, what, what have you done, Jeremy? What have sweet Sicily? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what did you do to Sweet Sicily? <laughs> I know. Wow, coming to the garden and cook, as Constance Spy would have said. Um, sweet Sicily, what I um, again early days with this one um, because you could never get Sweet Sicily. It was uh, like so many herbs, um, shrouded in mystery, not grown, and certainly not commercially available. And I think this is what brings up the interesting conversation, Miles, about all that you do, is non-commercial crops um, are, you know, have sidelined so many ingredients mm. um, because the appetite was very low for them, I suppose, or just not to the fore. And I wonder if more than anything else, it is, um, again, the inquisitiveness of cooks. Um, and going back to what was hidden behind monkish walls and old apothecaries and hidden in jars. And, we're, yeah. we're going back to that sense of yeah. these treasures hidden in the dark. Um, absolutely. Yes. 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 Strange yes. old realm. And there's an amazing woman called Hilda Liel, Mrs. Liel, uh, who wrote recipe books back in the 1930s. But she also had and founded Cole Pepper's Herb. Mm. And that's when I used to go to find things. And it's an amazing citrus fruit oils and essences and flavours of things. And we're in the other world, they're so powerful, you only needed a drop. Um, and I think you can still buy them. And I think it then went into the realm of being um, um, just, you know, folk, things, I think this is where grocers in Delhi suffer terrible when they get excited about something, you buy it, you put it on a shelf, and they don't know what to do with it. And then folk coming on, what is that? And then, uh, no, and then, then things sit on a shelf and you sell by date. It's that it's same sort of thing with the front of house, isn't it? There's this, yes. there's like this relationship waiting to happen, but there's no one there to facilitate. No, no, and just say, we've got this, you've got to try this. Yeah. It's amazing, it's yeah. delicious. Yeah, yeah. And I think what is particularly delicious about things like Sweet Sicily and herbs is... Because the dairy of the British Isles certainly used to be magnificent and is, and there's still wonderful, wonderful things to have. But if you made um, a custard out of, or a posset, uh, or a syllabub using sweet sister, I think you'd be very pleasantly surprised. A very mm. delicate, light, anisette flavour coming through the cream. Um, the then is wonderful um, just to drink, actually. I've got to say, I do like drinking. Yeah. I'm often to be found in the kitchen sipping on a cup of custard. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love, love so. custard. I, like I, lo I just adore too, it. Yeah. Um, and because the cost of vanilla now is so un eye wateringly outrageous, um, we look more and more to them bay leaves, lemon, um, sweet Sicily, chervil, um, and these flavours. Because I don't want to eat a frond, a leaf on a pudding. I have to say, I'm that, I'm, I have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> But infused in, um, but 
And that is delicious. So leaves should be in, but not on. No, yeah, I have to say, I get, I get very. Leaf on is not on. Yeah, I'm not. Leaf off, please. <laughs> leaf off. <laughs> leaf alone. Leaf off here, governor. You know, and that I find, I find very odd because I don't think you develop, you, de- you. It's just a bothersome thing, and also I think at the end of, um, you know, when you've eaten quite a lot of food um, through lunch or dinner, to then have to battle through a herb, I think it's very troublesome. Um, and sort of harks back to my, you know, the dread of having a bit of raspberry with two mint leaves and you're dusting rice and shoe on a pudding. Oh, God, really? Um, I haven't moved on a bit. And I, but these, the other interesting thing is when you use the, and you can get the seeds on sweet so it's amazing, but the stalks very, very thinly sliced going into a slaw of some sort makes the most wonderful Absolutely. salad dressing. Yeah. Uh, uh, salad dressing. Yeah, you could put okay. that in the salad. You know, if you've got yeah. cabbage, it's very finely sliced. But if you mm. mixed, I think if you mix sweet Sicily stock, as finely sliced as a spring onion stock, you'd be amazed at what you know happens in a you slot. Get just little bursts of anise oh, that so you weren't delicious. expecting. Yeah, you know, you go, wow, yeah. and you go, what? Yeah. Oh God, that is good. You know, it's pleasantly surprising. Yeah. So that will knock up a custard for you out of that. So I'm, I'm going to be in. Intrigued to find out whether there, there are any surprises for you in this box. Just how well have we been making you uh, familiar with the broad <laughs> spectrum of everything that we do? Oh, um, uh, ooh, I know. Here we go. Exactly. So, you know, on tenterhoof. Okay. So, ah, this uh, yes. sea arrowgrass. No, this is amazing. These are very beautiful. Is this slightly aniseed as well? It isn't. There's another very familiar flavour in it, though. God, what is that? amazing. And that is... I put you on the spot now, haven't I? You have slightly. Many's the chef I put on the spot with this one, actually. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's everything familiar. You have a lot. It's everything you ever loved. Brown, fresh, tangy. Slightly oniony. Slightly tiny. Not on. yet. No, not yet. No, yeah, no you like yeah. to... No, take me out of my misery, please. Coriander. Coriander, there you go. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, that's amazing. And maybe a hint of coconut? Well, ignore the coconut. I'm a mobile. <laughs> you don't like coconut? No, not really, no, okay. no. I have a terrible memory of once putting the kids through having to cook some extraordinary amount of coconut cakes downstairs. We did, it took a long time to recover. Um, like no, I'm not. I like a bounty bar, but I'm not mad about it. You know. Interesting, I don't get coconut in that, right, curiously. Okay. Coriander, absolutely, and fantastic. I adore coriander. Um, that is absolutely delicious. So what we say about... So does this go alongside Samphire? And... It's in the same kind of place. It's a bit further up. Right, okay, yes. It seems slightly more... Robust, and you not, have to get your eyes. You s- initially think, "Oh, that's just grass," but well, once you once you learn how yeah. to spot it, um, it becomes a bit more obvious. But I remark because it's so. I, I I love this game when you get flavors that are so familiar. You then you go, and it's and it's right there. And you just can't. T- you know that that's delicious. Yeah, yeah. So we say um, we say, tastes like coriander. Use it like chives, basically. Yeah. yeah. No, so I'm absolutely, in. just beautiful. Yeah, it's a very nice fish dish, I've marked and really. Yeah. And again, it's one of these flavours, like I was saying uh, on the podcast about the um, clove flavour actually being a native indigenous flavour. Much to our surprise, coriander turns which out. Is, yeah, which is extraordinary because there is, you know, that, there was that, that extraordinary legend of the ship sailing um, towards the Moluccas and then we knew they were on the right path and the, when the sea winds brought the smell of cloves, you know, over the horizon. Right. That would be amazing. Well, we wouldn't have that here because the, the roots are hidden in the ground. With, with, yeah. With the, with the clove <clears throat> aroma of the wood avens. <laughs> what do we have next? Oxide daisy leaf. Oh, yes, I love this. But, you know, we are mostly looking at aromatics um, mm. today. When I, when I went into the fridge to think what 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 most typical of the season, most of the things are aromatic. So that's, that's a leaf that's slightly aromatic, probably the... Almost the exception. Yeah, it's elusive, isn't it? Yeah, that has a slightly grassy quality, hasn't it? That hasn't got quite the magic of our coriander friend, the seagrass earlier. But it's very delicious. It's clean. It's just delightful put through a salad, yep. I find. Or... Added, into, added into it. Just like, there's a you know, friend who, you know, you just want a great big wooden, well, a great big flat bowl piled high with all these wild herbs and you just feast away. Well, I mean, if you compare it to the kind of bags of leaves that you get from the supermarket oh these days. Oh, my God, those. I mean, what on earth is that about? These gassy pillows. 
that die on contact with air, let alone vinegar and oil. You know, I mean, the poor thing is just, I mean, whatever little gasp of life left expires the second you open the bag. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty grim. So, I mean, I like to say new improved um, salad now with flavour. Yeah, no, really. <laughs> oh, God. The joy of salad. You know, one of the, it's one of the most wonderful things in the world to eat. You know, and if you're feeling that a little bit jaded or a little bit um, needing a perk, a yeah. salad is the loveliest thing in the world. Well, that's what it does. I mean, I, I think I'm a, I think I'm a salad specialist. If, 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 oh, if you I, certainly if, are. If I look at my cooking repertoire, I basically make salads. Yeah, they're just genius and have no boundaries whatsoever. You know, and the rule books are the rule books. That you well, need. it's kind of a little bit of this and a little bit of that, isn't it? Absolutely, we're not an awful lot of what you fancy. Yeah. No. Endlessly. So now we're getting into um, some more of the aromatics. What do we have here? Wild carrot flowers. Oh yes. Now I was always told carrot flowers were bad. Oh my goodness, look at that. Hemlock. So, well, exactly. So the the problem with the carrot family is it does have some deadly poisonous species. Yeah. And you could mistake. Uh, wild carrot but um, most of them so there's a there's also a slightly generic name Queen Anne's Lace which unfortunately and confusingly is applied to lots of carrot family plants yes, yes. however the real story behind Queen Anne's Lace is that the flower is said to resemble lace that there's a story about Queen Anne working on it pricked her finger while she was lace making and there's and the, the drop, drop of blood oh like the thumbprint of St. Peter on a John Dury there's a there's an aromatic quality to the flowers. It's not a blow your head off quality, but no, it is um, surprisingly because it has un, it's not dissimilar to an elderflower, but um, without that wildly pungent um, musica mm. quality. So again, that's something that I just I just pick the. Uh, there's a nice bitterness to that actually, isn't there? Yeah, and these these bits just picked off, you see, and yeah. and through a salad with I don't know. Just now, some beetroot or some shelled yeah, beans, beans, or and it yeah, it adorns it, but it also embellishes it. Yeah, very with, um, with, lovely with, with, with flavour. And you know, I've I've moved on slightly in, in my attitude towards flowers. I've, I've, I always used to say, no, they've got to do some work on a dish other than being pretty. Yeah, but these well, no, like, I couldn't agree with you more. I think there is a place fighter, and nothing should go on a plate that you cannot eat. And it should enhance the dish and is, you know. And in fact, when I was with Alistair Little, he taught me one of the most valuable lessons is, you know, what can you take off the dish rather than add to it? You know, and so be assured, with the lesson being, be assured that whatever is on the di- on the plate... Is it really earning its place on that yeah, dish? Exactly yeah, exactly so. But I don't know. I've, I've, I've revised my thinking for this reason. What is a flower? Flower is a way of drawing attention to an insect... Because the sweet stuff on the inside. So I thought, well, why shouldn't it do it to our food too? Why oh, can't I think that's perfect. That a perfectly sage response to the whole business. <laughs> no, fair dues indeed. Because I think there is a, you know, that, that, it's like with mushrooms. I mean, almost everyone in France can't wait to get the mushroom until mushroom season comes and can't go over. There they are. <laughs> Scottish. Have you got Scottish Tyrol yet? They are Scottish Tyrols, but, oh, but they're last year's journey. Oh, good. Have you got any of this year's yet? They're, they're on their way. Oh, fantastic. Puffballs? Not yet. Oh, will you keep me posted, please, I dear will. friend? That's so, so Those are last year's Scottish so Tyrols. Um, we had a little bit of a glut, so our in-house chef um, did that to them. So Wonderful. Have a taste and see. Uh, you think you did a good job? I don't know how Calucci is to do jars and this is really yeah. Wow, that is so delicious. Almost like it's sweet. It yeah, I think stop. I think some sugar did find its way into the pickle, actually. I must confess. Yeah. Very nicely, though. Subtle. But it has a gentle hand, your pastry chef. Mm. Um, that, that I adore these. They're so delicious. Keep me posted ASAP whenever those are coming in. Mm. They're on my list of ingredients to find. Um, that's fantastic. Well, yeah, so we take a slight detour down the, down Pickle Street now. Yeah. So those were the pickle to rolls. These are oh, just uh, elderberries. Yes. No, no, no. They're um, no. they're bilberries, blaeberries, wattleberries. Wow, and whinberries. Winberries, or f- I think even in Ireland they're called frown. I think so. There's so yes. many names in in the uh, British Isles for this one berry. Oh God, yeah, fantastic. So again, that's the glut that we have. You know, so we just pickle. We just wow, pickle the extras. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-mm. Yes, please. That's year love, round. I love those. All of those. Year round bilberries. Um, 
These are the Ramson's fruits. Now, we're, we're pedantic at Forager. All the chefs are calling them capers. But capers and yes, berries are the caper bush. Yes, no, it's like, I was about to say that don't, I was so busy, I was thinking those were elderberries. I said, thank God for the berries. This thing of making capers out of elderberries, you know, on right. No, I don't like it. I think, wrong. It's, I think it's frankly nasty. Yes, no, deeply, deeply wrong, you know. But, there's some there's some wicked insurgents there. But it just confuses matters. I mean, just 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 while we're on the subject of penetry, my my, my, my soapbox issue around correct names for things <laughs> is all this stuff about cresses. A cress is not a little seedling. It, nope. It's got nothing to do with it. A cress is a spicy mustard leaf. Vital with a mustard with a, kick, a peppery kick. It just so happens that they make little seedlings of a species of cress, and that's how the confusion came in. Right. And now they say coriander cress. Mint cress. Yes. No, 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 no. Those are I seedlings. believe the tweezer may be involved. <laughs> there may be a tweezer. Tweezer's got there involved. may be a tweezer or two involved. So these are emphatically not Ramson capers. They are Ramson's. Ramson's being the, 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 the proper no. name for, for our native wild garlic, for anyone listening that doesn't know. Um, but these are just basically the little fruits or seed pods Beautiful. that emerge after the leaf has all died back. Um, we've just done a conventional pickle with these. A lot of other people are... are basically salting them like you would a caper. Yeah. But rightly or wrongly, we've just done a straight pickle. Which I think suits them very well indeed. And that's very delicious. Again, whoever's... Your vinegar's excellent. And the pickle... Well, again, I can tell you... No great you, can tell, yeah. you can taste them. It all tastes of itself, which is it's a great prize, rather than, you know, my loathing of chutneys now, because there is just so much going on to actually smother the actual... Fruit or Whatever vegetable. kind of chutney it's alleged to be. Yeah, exactly. And I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond me to taste anything. But I'm, I'm devoted to individually pickling each thing. These are fantastic. Well, I'll leave that open in case you'd like to indulge May further. Mm-hmm. Light and fresh, very bonny. Well, that's, 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 uh, that's the end of our journey on, on Pickle Lane. Um, so now we actually have... I like our journey to Pickle Lane. We're very happy with it. <laughs> so, now, now actually, on the subject of cresses, this, this is ah. the flower of a cress. This is a cress no. flower. So... It's oh, black, it black mustard flowers, and they have a kick like a mule. Oh, fantastic, my favourite. No, they're, fanta- they're just gorgeous, aren't they? Now, these definitely are not just a pretty face. No. They earn their place on the dish with uh, fire. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow, they're just great. So t- tell us tell us what the, what the, what the, what the, uh, the place of uh, mustard in Scottish cooking is. Uh, well, not so much mustard, I would say, because I think it's, again, Scotland suffered from an enormous French influence. Um, and so the flavour, a lot of the flavour, there was not much flavour in the cooking I grew up with. Um, but, you know, unless it was mustard with roast beef, you know, absolute classics. Yeah. You know, and applied to cheese on toast or Welsh rabbit or such, such things as my parents would make us. Um, but as I grew up, um, and then comedy became my own head chef and got my hands on menus. Um, one of the things that became apparent very quickly uh, that my palate like were very vibrant flavours and bright freshness. Um, and mustard and horseradish was pivotal to that. And, okay. and so, and I've always been very lucky. I've never had to do the burger or the steak on the menu. Or what have you. I mean, they appear many guises but I never had to do the you know the, the pleasing family dishes God knows how it's asked well I don't, I've had so many chef friends who've had sort of repetitive burger syndrome i.e. they go to somewhere where where the, the investor swears blind he, he understands the chef's vision and six months later <laughs> they're on the phone going so they've done that again they're um, asking me to put burgers <laughs> <laughs> bring on the burger you know what I mean really oh, no, I'm going I'm going I'm going so you um, managed to escape that? Managed to escape that, and so our burger, so to speak, was ongle, um, and the butcher's cut. Um, and we had to use the French term ongle for this good diet farm, right, in, just inside the belly. Um, but the most wonderful flavours of meat, very lean, mm-hmm. which is brilliant, uh, toothsome, God knows you to chew, but, you know, if you cooked it well, and if you carved it accordingly against the grain, it would fall away quite right. happily, right. deliciously. And it adored um, the trinity of watercress and peppercress and, and, and yeah. horseradish and a pickled walnut. Mm. Um, you know, which I do think is a very classic British flavour um, trio. 
I think it's a great trinity. Of beef, and, beef and pickled walnuts, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and horseradish. You just go, it's fantastic. And then the um, dollop of mustard. And then what we find was then, there's that wonderful Italian dish, tagliata, where you have a bed of rockets and leaves, slivers of, to all intents and purposes, a long blade, sliced very thin on the um, salad, and then strewn with parmesan. And it's fantastic. And then if you take those dishes, and that's what I like, you go, well, you know, and so we do a beef and artichoke and mustard dish in the winter. Um, the artichokes are absolutely, mm. you know, absolutely peak from Italy. What have you. But I like these journeys, and I love these flavours, and I think these are, you know, just with pretty up addition. So I will mention someone has done something recently that, that I was thoroughly impressed by, uh, along the lines of what you've just described. So there's a, there's a new place, well, it's not it's just an old pub, but there's some guys just taken over the red mm. line at Stodmarsh, which is just oh, right. outside Canterbury. And they have a, they do have a standard sort of steak on the menu, but uh, as an accompaniment, I can't an say it. Could you say that for me, please? An accompaniment. One of those. Yes. Um, they have a big, hairy, black mustard leaf. Now, that's the leaf of this plant that we're looking at here. Wow, yes, because those it's are the... It's coarse, it's kind of almost prickly, and it's... Again, got an absolute smack you in the face with the intensity of the mustard. And over the years, we've known people to do a kind of chiffonade with it and just sort of oh, just, yeah, distribute yeah. it across the dish to kind of make sure you're not... Yes, and then you don't know what it is. You know, I, I believe a whole... I do and you don't even know where that flavour came from because it's in there yeah. somewhere. They've just gone for it. They've gone, here's your steak, here's your sauce, and here is a leaf. You Amazing. take a little slice That's of the steak, fantastic. slice of the leaf, and shove it in your gob. And, <laughs> and it's it's, magic, it's stroke of boldness and genius, you know, absolutely works. So, well done, Morgan Lewis, the chef, chef at Disney. Uh, we, bravo, we, we, Canterbury. It's a real, real, real bold step forward, I think. Um, Time for a pilgrimage, mm, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to check them out. They're doing some really fun and interesting things. So there's a lot going on in Canterbury now. There's a wonderful kind of move turn there, um, and all you know, and very happily. I don't know. I have to eat some more ransom to temper that fiery mustard. <laughs> don't be vicious. God, that's good. I'm afraid we're starting to make a mess, Jeremy. Oh, there you go. Well, the great thing having an expanse of rooms with which to play <laughs> with, you know, we can scatter away to another one. We've, we've turned it down, you know. We've been rock and roll stars and trashed the hotel room. We're just, we're just foragers, and we come and. Oh, no. Leave black mustard flowers on go. the carpet. I know. I mean, innocence. Like Hansel and Gretel, a little tail of breadcrumbs and forage leaves all the way to the kitchen. Okay, so we were talking about oh. tarragon. Um, What's that pretty thing? Oh, I always get a bit nervous about my retention of Latin names, but I believe this is Artemisia vulgaris. Now, tarragon is Artemisia something or other. Yes, exactly. Yes. So they're very closely related. But I'm not Amazing. sure you'll find much tarragon in that. It's uh, It's probably got other things that you'll be familiar with. I knew this one raw as well, yeah? Oh, well, it's a herb. Mm. Slash, yeah. borderline spice, you know, so it's for infusions, yeah. um, whatever you do with herbs, chopping it finely. Um, it has that, so, God, it's delicious. It's almost like savoury, isn't it? And, and, and I would suggest definitely rub and sniff. That's, yeah. that's kind of, you know. I've got an amazing flavour. I don't mm. think you want to eat that particularly. No, it's got, a, it does, it's got a texture like cotton wool, I'm afraid. Yeah, but, I know. But, uh, and even the leaves Bomb have a taste you like cotton more, but you just somehow got to get that flavour. It's almost that's amazing. It almost lends itself to just tying that together and taking yeah. it out. Yeah. You know, afterwards. Yeah, no, absolutely. If, if yeah, something's going to sit for long enough, of joy that'd be me. Yeah, yeah. Or chop it so fine you won't notice. You know, but um, I'm going to choose up quite happily. Not for very long. I would, I would recommend that. That's delicious, and that's got all sorts of lovely things going on. Sorry, not for very long. What? Uh, I wouldn't chew that for very no. long. Just to, 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 to experiment. Yeah. It's my failed experiment just proved. Yeah. Um, but I, there's interesting. There's wisps of marjoram and um, savoury here as well, which is quite interesting. That's lovely. Um, this I don't know at all. This is brand new. Aha! Uh -huh. So we have You've managed to pull me. another one out of the house. Yes, I'm more tricks up our sleeve. Good. Mugwort broods. I mean, amazing. So to tell you a little bit about it, um, please do enlighten me. The traditional use for that that's that's very strong in Europe is it's used for for stuffing the wild goose. And, wow! And 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 I even I've had. Uh, conversations with, well, I had a friend at university who was from Eastern Europe, uh, not Eastern Europe, East Germany, and he grew up 
observing his grandmother drying nets. What for? Because they had goose at Christmas. So they had to have their little stash of dried uh, mugwort. A lot of tradition in Korean cuisine and Japanese cuisine for this. Who oh, is the bad guy? Well, that means that's very fascinating. So there's this, uh, there's this, there's this whole genre of sweets made with uh, rice flour and filled with a kind of bean curd. There's one using mugwort for that. Amazing. There's um, a classic Korean soup that's so used. Interesting. Um, like a bowl. Got a big bowl of. It's got lots of ingredients in. That's all I. <laughs> I haven't cooked it, Jeremy. Else, I would have. Oh no, no, no! I'm just I'm it sort of just came up when I was researching it. But, but what, what? The other thing that came up, I was looking into this in a bit more depth last year, and um, it uh, turns out that it's got some of the same flavour compounds as rosemary and sage. It is. I'm, 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 Amongst that other things, surpri- but that doesn't surprise me because I'm that. It has got that herb garden. Yeah. Lovely. And it's, it's delightful. It's and extraordinary. also eucalyptol, which I think is otherwise known as camphor. So it, it's, 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 right. it's, it's a cocktail of flavour compounds in there, basically. A, uh, it's a busy little herb. There's a yeah. lot going on. And, Jeremy, you wouldn't believe it's... it's um, I mean, I shouldn't say this because I guess uh, as, as, a, as a vendor of stuff, one should try and make out that the thing you have is rare and scarce and... Unattainable, no. but actually this stuff's everywhere. Mugwort is everywhere. Oh, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But then I think also, um, but that's that's equivalent of when folks say you pay how much for elder flowers? I've got a garden full of them. I said, well, 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 only go and pick them yourself. Then, well, oh, but you know, oh well, all you go to Stoke News and say what you did, and have fun for the afternoon, and come back and tell me all about it, and make sure they're all in perfect condition. They're not sweaty and steamy and gone off. <laughs> You know, remark, it is, um, and don't pick them all. You know, we need some elderberries for them. And so, they're, 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 you know, that's with all these things is a great skill. Well, it's the magic moment, really. There's that, there's that fantastic thing called shun, if you're a Japanese person. So they have this, it's the, basic, it's the magic moment. It's that moment of peak, whether it's succulents. Oh, yes, of course. The great, the highest level of arom- ar- ar- being aromatic or the sweetest point. It's just that moment, shun. And, and, and the Japanese have this great thing of celebrating those moments with special dishes and almost mm, mm, mm. around the dishes. And I, I never forget being in a, in a, uh, in a wood with, with some of, some of the uh, chefs came down from restaurant story for the day. And I was trying to explain shun to them. And, 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 um, and there's actually a Japanese guy there who backed me up and said, no, you haven't. I said, am I talking nonsense? He said, no, no, you've got it. That's, that's what it means. And, um, but there was a, a parasol mushroom that was just at that sort of unopened drumstick phase and just beautiful that somebody had found. And the guys were getting down there and photographing it with their smartphones and things like that because the light was just shining on it, just perfect light. Good God. And by the time... Set by nature, lighting by God. That's right. But but, but, but I waited at the back, so I thought, well, they're the guests, let them photograph it first. And I just got ready to, with my, and the light just shifted and it was in darkness. <laughs> I said, that's it. That was Shun. That yeah. was that moment. We just caught it there, and now it's finished. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's, that's the art. By. Yeah, that's the art that, that, that anyone that's doing right, this that's foraging thing is trying well, thank to. Well, that. Oh, chamomile. Trying to, 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 to notice these moments before they pass and enable other people to uh, participate. Yeah. My favourite memory is this time drinking chamomile tea and Alice a little, trying not to, you know, become, you know, increase my coffee addiction, which is no more encouraging than I had. <laughs> and, and you're not drinking chamomile tea now. It's one extreme to the other, you need. And you just infuse this, don't you? And make a very de- well, delicate um, ah, tea sam or syrup. Tell me I how- would say... That, that it's a mistake to involve any kind of temperature that's a, that's even above 40 degrees on this. Oh, I really? would say cold infusion is the way. Oh, really? And you're going to discover a whole new world of chamomile because there's these grassy oh, herbs that come through. Yes. If you either dry it or heat it at all. Whereas if you infuse that cold, you're going to discover what the real oh, chamomile is in my opinion. So I'm, I'm not going to spoil it by saying what I think it tastes like, but... Have a go at infusing that cold and see what, see what you make of it. That's so interesting. I did not know that. 
How fascinating. And just the, just 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 linking things together. So the mugwort and the chamomile are both um, are both uh, in the daisy family, and it turns out that that family is also well known to you, Jeremy, in terms of lettuce, dandelion, yeah. endive, chicory, artichokes, and globe artichokes. They're all in that family too. But there's actually this whole spectrum of of really powerful and amazing, even medicinal aromatics, Good. also in the daisy family. Including constant the source of wonderment you are, my dear. Mm. And I would certainly call through that. And when you say a cold infusion, but that would be cold, just in cold water? or Well, if you're going to go syrup, you obviously yeah. need to make your syrup in advance and let it cool down. Yes. And to then put the camera 20 off. to 30 degrees? Yes, yeah, just, just let it cool down. Okay, so just above ambient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. And it would just be sugar, a very light sugar solution. Yeah, I mean, it depends where you're going with it. But, like, yeah. I mean, you could... Inf- so frankly, it's as, it is as flexible as with all of these ingredients. I've never you tried. Feel your yeah, way. yeah, I've never tried infusing it into milk once, but 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 um, I have infused it just into cold water. Delicious. That's good. It's surprising. There are some. There are some of these. I mean, I, I don't know what you feel about elderflower, but I, I find with that you need to keep the temperature low as well. If you if you well, uh, yeah, elderflower. I find elderflower sad because it is um, there's a pink elderflower. Oh, madly. I, that I really get excited It pains me to admit it, because I generally think when we cultivate things, we edge away from the, the wonder of them, but I have to admit, the pink elderflower is actually more tasty. No, no, it's, well, it's yeah. infinitely more exciting, and I think the, um, you know, and why it doesn't grow um, more, I think is quite peculiar. Well, somebody should get on it. Anyone that's planting orchards of elderflower, yeah. you to plant an orchard of pink elderflower. Yeah, yeah. Bizarre. Yeah. Um, yes, because it's like, oh, like barley water, you know, it's like, make your own, it's amazing. A revolutionary, I'd say. Whereas this next one, which is meadow sweet, this is, this is something... Oh, yes. This is something which I've found the, the, the opposite. It, it, it'll tolerate, you can boil the hell out of it. It won't make <laughs> any difference. You, you'll, you'll, you'll still get all the flavour, so they're just, they're just not heat sensitive. Yeah, yeah. that's remarkable. So that's just in season now, Jeremy. Like, oh, that's pretty. It's just fully out this week. Yeah. But you've worked with this. Yes, I love it very much. Custard um, again? No, actually cordial. Really? Um, for poaching, um, very, for very um, white peaches ah. and pears was very, that was very successful. Amazing. We liked that very much. Very delicate. Uh, very lovely. And again, just, you know, ridiculous amounts of it. So poaching syrup. Yes, because um, I am mad about poached fruit, um, and we poach um, everything here. Um, and it's very nice being able to add very different flavours to all the syrups we make. And then, what then, and then the syrups that then result, we then sell to the bar. Go on, Joe, go on, what can you give me for this? To ah. add to a prosecco or a carver or a creme or, you know, something, or a wine. And is, it, is the bar a good player, Jeremy? No, terrible. I know they're absolutely rotten. See, they rob me blind every time. Charm the gold from my riches. Shocker. Shocking crew. Then I look at you with butter melt in the mouth. Oh, and I'm really? <laughs> no, nah, they're good. It's very nice. It's all one roof. Just to tell you, we, we make a vinegar out of this. And so then it's um, standard for me- uh, Meadowsweet. Um, Lovely. And oh, that would be lovely. Mm. Yes, because we've got, we do herbs rather than flowers downstairs in vinegar. And we've got some okay. amazing marjoram and fennel and oh, heaven knows what's going on. Well, we just it? tried it out and we felt it worked. We've done the same with elderflower. Yeah, and lovely. so both of those just make a, just a really interesting dressing. Um, I will say the elderflower, the, the little twist I've done with that is, is add the elderflower vinegar to a chicken gravy. Oh, and lovely. That's made in heaven. Oh, how really delicious. Good. Cool, that's a bit scrumptious. Mm. Um, Ollie Dabu had a dish on for ages with meadow sweet and sweet corn. So I'm just interested to see these things filtering out into, into <laughs> more realms. Well, he's a racier of our father than I ever could be. Spirited cook, that one. Mm. So this is Melilo. Oh, yeah. No, oh, no, I know nothing of this. Well, you know much of the flavour compound it contains, I suspect. Tonka beans. Yes. And sweet woodruff. Yes, yes. Also contain the coumarin, which is the uh, the, the dominant um, flavour. Oh, that's a mad lily of the valley, isn't it? 
it's, 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 actually, it's actually a clover. If you, if you look at the leaf, you'll see it's like a long, skinny clover oh, that's leaf. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, no. I haven't come across this one before. How interesting. So, it's, um, I mean, for a man of custard as you are, yes. um, this, this definitely is a candidate for replacing vanilla. Um, Amazing. That would be beautiful. Did you know that Tonka bean flavour is... Oh, I love it. Kind of vanilla ish. Yeah, you know, crisp us off. Um, yeah, beautiful custard, beautiful ice cream, beautiful syrup. But, yeah. but savoury wise, very nice with rabbit and chicken. Oh, but two favourites of mine. I, I once did a, oh. a, a rabbit relay uh, where, where I approached the, the rabbit very slowly in, um, well, not really, you know, simmered it for ages in, in, a, in milk infused with mallow. Oh, wow. Mallow. Amazing. It was really good. Mm. Delicious. Mayali Ayai Lati. No. Delicious. That, that's a definite one. I will need some of that, please. I would love. Um, I mean, it's nice to be able to show you it like that, but actually, when it dries, it, it intensifies the flavour. How it Five times over. Dry. Yes, we do, yeah. There are boxes and boxes of it. How oh, brilliant. Um, oh, lovely. Well, I love it. Because sweet, I often wonder if sweet sicily is better dried as well. The leaf? Mmm. Or do you want the seeds? I don't think it is. No. And the seeds are no good dried. I mean, well, I won't say they're no good, but... They don't have the quiet... It's better fresh. It, 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 interesting. Whereas this intensifies when it's dry. Oh, it's just... Isn't that interesting? It's one of those things. Um, this box is never-ending, Mars. It's wonderful. <laughs> what a collection. And, and just, it's just interesting to note how many aromatics there are. Here we are on the something of the 9th of July. No. Yeah. It's the time of... I mean, it's extraordinary. I mean, well, what is it about, you know, I really, well, Fanny Brank has got about 70 botanicals in it, I think, you know, and then as you go down the thing, you know... The what? The what has? Fanny Brank. Oh, that amazing Italian, um, wonderful brew. Okay. You know, dark, murky brew that just puts everything to sleep. Golly jeepers. Is it an alcohol? Or? It is yeah. so an alcohol. It's like a spirit. Good. Spirit. Yeah. Right, right. Very spirited indeed. <laughs> Douglas fir. So these are the soft shoots. So the rest of the year, it's like a kind of yep. Christmas tree, pine needle-y thing. Um, but uh, just now, these these are... Sweet. I mean, they're kind of coming to their end now. But they're... Yeah. they're um, and you can eat these? Well, I'd have a little nibble. It's pretty intense. So you want to get that through. Again, it might work nicely in a dressing. You could put it through a bread. Who knows? You could maybe even use it as a, as a herb for a cake. Ooh, or there a we go. But, uh, that just kicked in. Yeah. Golly. Yes, I'd have to put my thinking cap on for that one. How intriguing. So, yeah, it's just, just nice to um, reveal the full spectrum. Of oh, God, no, no, no. But it's, well, it's great to see it all in the story and also to sit with a master of his craft um, to discuss all this. I'm being told, you know, illumination is wonderful. So if this is new or not. This is the yarrow flowers. Oh, yes. No, these I know of, but I've never known what to do with. It's a funny one, isn't it? It's because it's un quite unlike anything else. Well, you say that, mm. but I can tell you, having again looked into it, yeah, please do. There are, there are compounds that you would also find again in sage and rosemary, yeah. but this time the third one in the trio is lavender. That's which is not my favourite. Ah, I'm sorry. That's probably why you've not yeah. embraced it fully, Jeremy. I think so. That is that, and, 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 and now that you say it, I fully get it. Now I understand why. I'm. Lavender, I sleep well with lavender. Ah. For I love it very much in a bag, in, in a, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, which is... But you don't rate it as a culinary ingredient? No, I just, I, I, I just, it's not there. And I don't know why, there's no particular reason, um, but if I get a lavender scented cream or, and I go, whoa, you know, it doesn't float my boat, sadly. I'm afraid to disappoint you on this one, Martha. Well, my great well, apologies. Can I suggest a line of inquiry? Should you wish to? Uh, yes, by quest all means. Question your current position. Um, we made a syrup out of this, and then uh, one of us—it wasn't me. I think it was Ed Blaine again, actually. Um, made an ice cream. Now you won't believe what the consensus was as to what that ice cream tasted like. Everything else, but that. Was Chocolate. Oh, wow. I know like, I can get that. It tasted like chocolate. How peculiar. So that might be... Well, I'm more than willing to be, you know, led up the garden path and, you know, taken by storm by a chocolate, you know, curious. With 
We are approaching the end. The bottom oh, of the barrel. Salad. Well, now that's this is the herb I want to know more about. Well, I could start by positioning it in terms of you know its botanical relatives. This surprisingly, yeah, that's is a beautiful like a little nutty nettle-like leaf, isn't it? Well, we always say it tastes like melon and cucumber. Yeah. Um, but its close relatives are um, apples, pears, raspberries, yeah. and strawberries. Because it's, um, it's in the rose family. You can tell me, amazing leaf. So beautiful. It's called Salad Burnet, I believe, because there's a Burnet Rose, which has a, um, right. a leaf that looks very similar. Or the Burnet Rose is called that because it looks like Salad Burnet. I can't remember <laughs> which way down it is. But oh. certainly there's a connection. Very lovely. Charming. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that cucumber and mint thing is really great. It'd be great, right? So... Yes, we've done that. We've, we've was it, was it great? Yeah, yeah. And, delicious. And, I'm just mad. I could just spoon that. For and of days. course, really, this is what you want to do: just get those leaflets picked down, which is a bit of a faff. Yeah. If you're wanting to, I have to say, for my salads sal- at home, we're yeah. just chopping it down, stalks and all. But you know, you want if you're going to go to the trouble of putting it on your menu in a restaurant, I think you want people to see those. So yeah, beautiful. You're going to pick them down. Mix them in or scatter them over somehow. You know, yeah, lovely. Of, of, yeah, it's uh, time to give the cooks another cardiac arrest. They love all that. Yeah, they love to stand there and pick that down for two hours. And then well, that's why they became the chef. Well, the peckers are a lot of yeah. I have to yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, no, no, they like to get engaged. <laughs> so last and most emphatically not least, we have the glorious... Oh, I love this, yes. Sea blight, which, which looks a lot like... Is it a Gretzky? What's the, what's the thing? The yeah, monk's beard. Yeah, monk's beard. Which people Barbara always ask us for, and it's not a native species, not even no, a wild species. No, it's Tuscan. No, it's a Tuscan thing, isn't it? But this is pretty similar, I think. That's amazing. So there we are. That I love very, 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 very much. So this is for you to do as you will with. Amazing. Well, I shall have a great deal of fun downstairs. Well, that this afternoon, because I've got to be in the kitchen all for the rest of the day, so... And many lot I'm very excited about. I think that's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Miles. Well, thank you. And an absolute delight and, and a pleasure to uh, hear your thoughts. What a great pleasure, my dear, as always. Inspiring and magnificent.